You know, there's this belief that unless a man is validating your existence on earth, you have n no value. Hey, yo, hey, yo, hey, yo, welcome to my channel. Hey, yo, hey, yo, listen up, listen up, hey, yo, hey, yo, hey, yo, the wireless woman. Hey, shit, you in charge of the girls, right? I am in charge of the girls. Are you in charge of the girls? I am in charge of the girls. Okay. Hey, yo, hey, yo, hey, yo. I am your girl, Debbie and Nikki, the original wireless woman, welcoming you back to our spot, room 303. If you are new, welcome to my crew, but my returnees, you know what we do. If you like this video, well then like this video. Let the comments reveal how you really feel. Feel. And if you're feeling a vibe, well, go ahead on and subscribe. But before you blink, share this link. Welcome back, Wi-Fi. Luckily, I have finished my licensing program and been released from the Kraken. Release the Kraken. To come back and get back on this journey that we have been on. Today is a cult of personality episode of The Wireless Woman. I'm a cult of personality. And we will be talking about the call of duty. And today we're gonna to be talking all about all of the ways that these narcissists love bomb you into setting traps that will end up putting you on the hook for their responsibilities. But before we get too far into today's content, you already know what time it is. What are we gonna do tomorrow night? The same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. It is time to call the roll, so I need all of my good little soldiers to the front of the class. It is time for me to read you aloud. All right, welcome back Wi-Fi's to another episode of The Wireless Woman. This episode is in our cult of personality series and today we will be talking about the call of duty. Go ahead and do me a favor on your way in and like this video. Why? Because when you like it, well, I love it. I got enemies, got a lot of enemies, got a lot of people trying to drain me of my energy. So, I already know what you're asking yourself. It's a question that I've asked myself many times. Why? Why me? Why? How did a narcissist find a way to sniff me out and find me amongst all the other trash females that they could have picked? No, no, they picked me a good woman. Why? How did they find me? Well, the question is simple. And to put it in the words of Alexander Hamilton, because you were the best of women and the best of wives. Best of wives and best of women. Narcissistic people love to attach themselves with people who are important, people who have position, people who will help create distinction from other people for them. So the thing about most non-narcissistic people is that we play by the rules of society. We believe that if we work hard, we will rise through the ranks of others and eventually find our way like cream rising to the top of the pile because we have been loyal, dedicated, hardworking, and committed. But you have to remember, narcissistic people fall into that cluster B personality type, and there is a lot of antisocial personality behavior that is linked in and mixed in and overlapping with narcissistic personality types. And so these people believe that you get ahead by breaking the rules, by cheating, by um unjust gain that if you can manage to con someone out of something well you've done the work to deserve and earn it because hey if that person worked for it and gave it to you 
Joke's on them for being that big of an idiot, right? Right. It's very divergent from how most people think. And so you have to be careful with getting entangled into these contracts with narcissistic people, contracts that require you to uphold your end of the deal. You know, a lot of people don't think that narcissistic people want to be married or want to be in businesses or leases with people, but they actually enjoy that because if you are the type of person who cares about your reputation cares about your credit who is deeply entrenched in religious systems that create stratified levels of duty and responsibility i mean think of the church think of the military where the only way for you to move to the next rank is to prove faithful with some responsibility you know, the people that are in charge place the responsibility for being faithful on those that are below them. You know, I have belonged to churches where in order for you to become a deacon or a deaconess or an usher or to speak or become a member of certain sub organizations within the church, you had to go through proving yourself, if you will. Meanwhile, the pastor's sleeping with parishioners. You know, the responsibility to actually be the best and the greatest in our society is more often placed on those that are below leadership than it is on even the people who are leading the people that have the greatest amount of responsibility. You know, we place the least responsibility on people who are leaders. And that's why you have so many people that look to subjugate other people because, hey, all the responsibility is down here on the bottom, not up here on the top where I am. And that feeling of superiority, that the responsibility for making this work is on you, not me, is something that the narcissist lives for. They live for the ability to make someone else responsible for them, for whatever commitments that you all have made together. That's why a lot of times you'll see with a narcissist, you guys will get linked into a commitment together. And then when you're left holding that bag, the first thing that they say to you is, well, I mean, I never signed us up for this. I never So you have to be careful not to get out in front with a narcissist with making a lot of commitments, making a lot of demands on your time because those people will entangle you. They love a nice, good entanglement, something that if you don't come through on the promise y'all made will make you look bad. And because you have such a commitment to your word, to following through with promises that you make, they know that whether they do it or not, baby, you're on the hook. So these people are going to get you into marriages. They're going to get you on a mortgage with them, you know, and you think to yourself, well, if this person didn't want the same things I wanted, why did they marry me? Why did we get this house together? Why did we adopt this dog together? Why did they want me to have their child? Baby, you're on the hook. I say it, I say it again, you've been had, you've been took, you've been hoodwinked, bamboozled, let us stray, run them up. And once I've got you on the hook, I can reel you, I can drag you, you know, this person can buy years of your life just because for you it's cheaper to keep her or him. You know, because now you become entangled in a in a commitment. And so you have to be careful that if you are with a person that's not bringing the same things into the relationship that you are, that person's not bringing the same dedication level that you are. You're seeing that person go back on their word. Women, we're going to have to take a lot more time in these relationships. We're going to have to stop letting those same patriarchal systems that tell us that we need to be married. We're spinsters if we don't get married right now that make us believe our value and worth as women is tied up in our position to men. And of course, all these things are vice versa for men, but I believe there's just more of a social societal norm that's put on women to marry. 
you know, there's this belief that unless a man is validating your existence on earth, you have no value. And so we have to be careful to actually vet these men. Now, don't get me wrong. No length of vetting process is foolproof. None. You're always going to be dealing with someone who has the opportunity to get up and make a choice to do things that are not going to uphold their duty. That's not going to uphold their word. And that's okay because you can't control people. You know, a big part of narcissism is being addicted to control. And a lot of times people who are in relationships with narcissistic people will take on narcissistic traits. The only way to counter an emotionally combative person like that, even at best, is to be in a defensive situation, which is still going to spar, which is still going to be a two-sided exchange. So you have to really make sure that you are taking time to recognize whether or not this is a person who believes in duty, in obligation, in holding up their end of any deal. Because if not, if they're consistently, routinely not willing to meet you halfway when it comes to commitments and obligations and promises that you make to each other, you're more than likely dealing, if not with a narcissist, with a person who has a high amount of narcissism in their personality. And ultimately, you're going to be dealing with strife, contention, defiance. That's never going to change. It may look different depending on how you counter it. Because as that person is learning you, they're adding more and more personality traits to their arsenal of weapons that they can use against you. So it may look different in different seasons, but ultimately you are not on the hook to keep your word to people that are not keeping theirs. That is not your duty. Your duty first and foremost is to yourself. Choose yourself. And then you're able, once you choose yourself, to surround yourself with, make covenants and commitments with people who choose you also. And that's not from a selfish place where you choose you and they choose you and forget them. But it's from a place where that person choosing you gives you the room to be able to choose them back because you're both taken care of. You know, you don't want to choose that person and then not be chosen and now be left out in a validation seeking relationship where you've got to consistently be adding value to that person for them to be there. If you could just go ahead and make sure you do that from now on, that would be great. Okay, so the call of duty is not to prop up another person at your own expense. The call of duty is to love and honor yourself and then to treat everyone else with the same dignity, with the same standards that you've given and shown towards yourself. I hope that helps. If you are ready to get rid of the toxic, destructive, combative, selfish narcissist in your life, do me a favor and drop that fire headphones emoji in the comments if you have questions concerns or topics content that you'd like to see make sure you leave that for me in the comments as well but as always i am the girl debbie and nikki your neighborhood wireless woman make sure you follow me on all my other social media platforms even though i can't imagine why you haven't done that already but until the next episode class is now dismissed you know the drill All right, thank you for sticking around until the very end of this episode. If you liked this content, then you may want to check out this video right here. And if you haven't already, for whatever insane reason, go ahead and subscribe to my channel by clicking this link right here. Until the next time, be unplugged, unbothered, and unleashed.
You're not niggas.